Calgary's always been known as a place full of freedom and opportunity. The people and the businesses here are full of potential and have an amazing spirit. And everybody is really here to grow and prosper and become the best that they can be. Lately, it seems like City Council has another agenda. An agenda that often gets in the way of that growth and prosperity that we've all worked so hard for. It's time for a change. I've been involved in city politics and development issues since 2008. I uh, was at city council and watched 735 speakers speak out against an issue. And council made a decision against the majority of these people. I'm here because I want to bring democracy back into city politics. the vacancy rate in downtown commercial properties. It was at 40% vacancy rate before 2019 and it's gotten even worse since then. It seems that the current city council has not been placing emphasis on the business community. And I want to see that change. I want to see the downtown community. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm really concerned that they gave themselves a wage increase and they increased our taxes. And that's just not right. We can't afford it anymore. How can the common people afford anything these days? It's totally wrong. They've totally lost touch. And it's not right. We need to do something about this. this city. We know this is a fantastic place to live, work, play, raise a family, do business. All of these things is critical that we work together to ensure this is the case well into the future. My name is Michael Valley. I'll be your MC for our proceedings this evening. Uh, a lot of people like to mention that they're born and raised Calgarians. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm from Saskatchewan. Please don't. <laughs> However, I have been in Calgary longer than I've lived anywhere else in Canada. Uh, it's been an awful long time and this is the city that I call home. Um, tonight we're going to be welcoming up um, some incredible Calgarians to talk about why they love this city and the things that we must do to protect and preserve our opportunity and prosperity for all Calgarians for generations to come. I'm very pleased to bring up our first guest. She isn't a member of our organizing committee, but like those in the video, she cares passionately about our city, and she was invited here this evening to share her thoughts. Fellow Calgarians, please welcome 2010 Olympic silver medalist, Corey Morris. Oh, 
because I'm not going to grow <laughs> that way. Um, thanks. I, I have to throw in Mike and I curl against each other on Thursday night. I'm not sure what our win loss record is against each other. Win. Yeah? You win most of the time. Right. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Um, thanks everyone. My name is Corey Morris. Uh, my, my claim to fame is, is the 2010 Winter Olympics. I was lead on the Cheryl Bernard curling team. Um, <clears throat> I moved to Calgary 25 years ago from central Saskatchewan via our nation's capital where I studied political science and began my professional career. Uh, I missed my western roots and so moved to Calgary in the late 1990s because it was the place to be, much like Mike. Since then I have lived in Sonelta, Beltline, Mission, West Tillhurst, Capitol Hill, and seven years ago my husband and I chose to find a quiet suburban neighborhood in which to raise our two children, um, a neighborhood more akin to my farm girl roots, and we settled in Parkland where Fish Creek Provincial Park serves as my back 40. Standing up in front of a room full of strangers is not my comfort zone. I would much rather be on a sheet of curling ice playing in an Olympic gold medal final with a few million people watching on TV. Um, but as I tell my two young kids, okay, I gotta do a little side story here because I get emotional in front of a room full of people. Um, so during the Olympics um, and through my competitive curling career, uh, doping control was a real thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess that's the price you pay when you make it to the, uh, the most senior levels of your sport. And when you do doping, um, you go into a bathroom stall and, and not only are you in the stall trying to hit a cop, um, but you're there with a person watching you. There's no closed doors when you do this process. And if you're, uh, you know, have the misfortune to get someone who doesn't speak your native language, you can have a translator there too. <laughs> so when I get emotional, I just think back to doping. <laughs> and I take a little breath and I'm going to try to get the job done. <laughs> so, as I often tell my two young children, sometimes, even though we're scared, we need to do things anyways. Yeah. So I'm going to take a deep breath and carry on and think doping and here we go. <laughs> a few weeks ago I took a deep breath and I stood up in front of city council to voice my opposition to blanket upzoning. Apparently I was also one of the few to, uh, to get Kara's attention. I brought with me a white cowboy hat. You, some of you may, may have seen those, those proceedings. Why did I bring that white hat? I wanted city council to know that the previous time I had been in that building was to be white-hatted in April of 2010 following the Olympics, um, recognizing our achievements. I'm not up here tonight to spew political philosophies or to sell anyone on any kind of agenda, that's not my role. Uh, but some of those organizing tonight, Mike and Cheryl, felt that my message to City Council resonated, um, and so I'm going to reshare some of those thoughts. Many of you in this room will not only remember the Vancouver Olympics, but also the Calgary Olympics. And I didn't live in Calgary at that time, but 10 years later when I did move here, you, the energy was still palpable. The camaraderie, the community spirit, the volunteerism that Calgary demonstrated to the world um, was still rampant then, it's still rampant today. It was a big part of why I chose to make my home here. The Vancouver Olympics fanned those flames, proving once again how such an event can bring the citizens of a community together, and a country together. The Olympics is an unbelievable time for the entire world to put it, don't they? <laughs> to put aside their differences, to engage with respect and sportsmanship, and accomplish amazing feats that far surpass the value of any medal. It is an opportunity to inspire generations. Since winning the right to wear the maple leaf on my back in Vancouver, I felt a sense of responsibility. Not only did I want to succeed on the ice for myself and my teammates, but it was important for me to be a role model for those following our journey, to treat the volunteers and officials with respect, to honor my competitors, to represent all the other curlers in this country, including Mike, Even me. Who, who, much, who, who would have loved to have been in my shoes. 
Um, it was important for me to show that even in the face of a disappointing gold medal game loss, that being a team and supporting one another was the ultimate achievement. Doping. <laughs> one of the greatest responsibilities that I feel of, of having that Olympic silver medal that I won with my team is to be a role model for others, to share stories of the value of teamwork, the commitment to continuously improving oneself, to respecting the perspectives of others such that they can help me improve my own game. And of course, integrity and persistence, there's, the story, the, there's so many parallels to, from sport that we can take to life. It's the same sense of responsibility that I feel when I take my 10-year-old out to pick garbage along the, on Long Bull Bottom Trail or Fish Creek Park. He asked me, Mom, why do we need to pick up other people's garbage? To which I say, one, so that you never, ever litter. Two, to take care of our planet. And three, most importantly, because maybe if others see us picking it up, maybe they too will be inspired to pick some up themselves. So where am I going with this? Well, call me crazy, but I believe our elected officials are role models too. And all of those in this room tonight, we are leaders, we are concerned about our city, we too are role models. The world has become far too divisive. From bullying in the schoolyard to wars around the world, the world has never been in greater need for people to stand up and take action while at the same time actively listening to one another, seeking to understand, and who can meaningfully engage in respectful discourse and find a way to a place of compromise. Calgary doesn't need to pit university students forced to live out of their cars against homeowners who've worked hard to build a home for their families in single family communities. Calgary is filled with incredibly resilient, creative, engaged, educated, and talented people who care deeply about this city and maintaining it as one of the most livable cities in the world. This room is filled with those people. The public hearing was filled with those people. There's pure gold here in Calgary and it doesn't run through a pipeline and we don't wear it around our neck. That is what's important. We have so much to be proud of in this city and we have so much to fight for. Thank you so much. Oh, oh yeah. A little taller. Yeah. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, um, let us give a warm Calgary welcome to two proud Calgarians who are also the spokespeople for a better Calgary party, Cheryl Munson and John Horton. Thank you, Mike. Welcome, Calgary. It is my great honor and privilege to be one of the spokespeople for the A Better Calgary Party and to stand and welcome you all here tonight. I really believe this is the best city in the province, the country, and the world to live. And I want to do my part to make sure future generations benefit from what many of the incredible people in this room and in this city have built. I believe in this city, I believe in the people in it, and I believe that we can restore all that makes Calgary the best. Now we have an opportunity to come together and do just that. I also love this city and what it represents. I've lived in many places in my life, and I really, I wasn't born here, I'm another from Saskatchewan, but you know what? <laughs> I, I got here as soon as I could. I <laughs> And I've chosen to raise my family here and pursue my, my career in finance. Um, and in recent years, you know, what we've seen in the cities, things have started to change. And I think we're all here because of that. I think each of you has seen that. This is a wonderful crowd and we're really, really happy and delighted that you all came out here tonight with us. What we've seen is that our city council is becoming increasingly out of touch with Calgarians. We've witnessed a decline in 
the very thing the municipal council is you know, tasked with doing, which is, we believe, fiscal responsibility and maintaining essential services. And we all aware, you know, we are sitting here in the midst of a, a, a local emergency. Our, our main water line is actually broken. And this is, you know, this is a crisis. I, myself, have worked in, in, in many crises through, through time. Um, I know how to get through from one side to the other, but I also know, critically, leadership makes a difference. Who's calling the shots kind of drives a, a good or worse outcome. And that's kind of where we are today. When we reflect on municipal politics, we reflect on what is happening in terms of how we got here. You know, one of the problems is we believe it's a political process. Up till now, before our municipal party was you know, available for Calgarians, to be honest, most of our leaders were either chosen by other people, unions, business leaders, or self-appointed. The people of Calgary did not have an opportunity to you know, have a voice in that decision. We were asked to you know, show up at the ballot box, but we weren't given a voice in selecting those candidates, which is what we're, here, we're, we're about today. There's wisdom in people. There's wisdom in democracy. There is something that sits in the active people in, in the society that are willing to put their time and their attention into helping pick the best leaders to show up and represent us in city council. And that's part of, that's why we think the party is going to be important. We also think it's important that uh, not only when we pick the best leaders, we think it's important that there's a narrow field, that we have just the best candidates you know, sitting on that ballot. And that's, that's why we're here today. Uh, Calgary is a, it's a city of entrepreneurs, it's a city of innovators, risk takers. You know, this is one of the hardest working populations in Canada if you look at the GDP numbers or, or anything along those lines. This city was built on waves of newcomers who came to this city you know, largely because of the opportunity and the prosperity that was available for them to, you know, with their families and, and in their careers. And by doing so, contributed to the success of this city. The Calgary I know, and I truly believe this, is, is, is a meritocracy. And what do I mean by that? It means that it's not about who you know, it's not about what family you came from. If you show up and you have talent, you have an opportunity to earn your own success. You have an opportunity to kind of benefit from the value that you create. And nowhere, I think, in Canada can you do that except for here in Calgary. I am here today enjoying this party because I want to unite with people who love this city as much as I do. I am a born and raised third generation. <laughs> this city. I'm raising my kids here, I run my business here, and I know that there is no place I would rather be. When I think about Calgary, the city I grew up in, what comes to mind is that... Doping. <laughs> this was a small town in a big city. It felt like everybody knew everybody and they always had your back. That's what I remember. I remember it being a safe, close-knit, big, small town. But I have noticed a shift. We're starting to lose some of that, that neighborly warmth and that community connection that reminds us all what it means to be a Calgarian. I believe that this political party can and will reinvigorate us. This, this gives us a common cause and a shared experience. I really believe that this is an opportunity to bring us together as Calgarians through participatory democracy. That's my favorite line. <laughs> so, so who is you know, a, a better Calgary party? Uh, you know, effectively, when we learned that municipal parties would be allowed in the next election, a group, a large group of like-minded individuals came together from all across the political spectrum. And we, we spent some time looking at other, where political parties kind of operate in Montreal and in Vancouver and how they you know, effectively play a role in, in, in the democratic process that you know, I talked about earlier. And specifically about engaging Calgarians uh, differently and how a party can create the process and, and access to pick the leaders that used to be the domain of only a, a few people and how we can make a better Calgary through better leadership. We believe, starting today, the era of making, deci making decisions for the many behind closed doors is over. Today, Yeah, today we are making history. Um, you know, it's the first time in the history of Calgary the municipal party is being, you know, on the table. 
And it's the first time that we have an opportunity for everybody in this room and also beyond to be a help, be, to help get help Calgarians, you know, the Calgary elect the best candidates. The Calgary, and elect candidates that align with your values. You know, candidates that you know and trust. This is a chance to build something from the ground up. We are not launching today with a predetermined selection of candidates, if you haven't noticed. We're not launching with a big war chest of, of financial sponsors. We're, we're launching today with you, because it starts with the people. It starts with each of you coming together. And we're, we are a center right broad coalition that are looking to grow. Anybody can join us, anybody can be a part of it, just as long as you share our, our values and our principles. And today is really about building a better city. Oh, I'm going. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, this is kind of getting to the, some of the mechanics of it. We believe there's three there's three pillars in order to you know make this successful. Financial, we need financial donors, we need great candidates, and we need the, really the support of Cal of Calgarians. And we know we have to bring all these three together. And we're also thoughtful that, and, and we can't kid ourselves, that you know, we truly believe that a well-funded, well-organized party will be built on the left, and that we will we run the risk as conservatives, I'm not use that word, as like-minded Calgarians, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that we'll split the vote and we'll defeat ourselves. And that's typically how we roll. And that's partly why we're launching today. We want to be out, we want to bring the people of Calgary together to kind of get this thing going. And there's been a lot of discussion about why municipal parties don't belong in, in municipal politics. We fundamentally disagree with that. We think there's a value proposition for a party. We think it's good for candidates. It, provide resources, it provides resources and access uh, to volunteers and financial donors and data to help kind of drive a better outcome. Most importantly though, it narrows the field and increases each candidate's probability of success. Uh, we also are aware that pseudo parties, I don't know what you want to call it, have been operating in Calgary for quite some time. Well funded, well organized, putting their candidates um, into City Hall. We believe it's good for donors. You know, I broke down the, uh, the financial donation of this, the last election. $7.5 million were spent. You know, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And financial donors generally want a good outcome. 70% of all the dollars, if I exclude the uh, third-party advertisers, you know, was way, did, well, didn't drive a successful vote. Um, those aren't, that's not good metrics in terms of, uh, of financial donations. But most importantly, we think it's good for the electorate. Parties provide opportunities for people to volunteer and get involved. I was sitting here door knocking this time last year, you know, I was door knocking with a, a gentleman. Been a citizen of Canada for three months. Like, unbelievable, just to show up and be a part of that democratic process and door knock. I bet you, Half of Calgary has never done that in their life, let alone the three months after citizenship. And it provides transparency to vote voters, and mostly, and mostly importantly, it takes away the problem. And this is what we see as the problem. Last election, we had 27 men, candidates sitting there running for mayor. It is not possible for an electorate to show up at the ballot box, be well informed and ed educated on 27 candidates. It's just not fair to them. That's our job. We got to fix that. And so, what are we going to do and how are we going to pull it together? This is a membership of an organization. We are looking to build 14 ward associations across, uh, across the city. Each ward association will run a nomination contest or an incumbent ratification process to select the best representative from each ward. We plan on running a, a mayor contest, a nomination contest as well, to you know, put the best mayor candidate forward that we can find. And our job is to then endorse the, the candidates that the party members choose. And then lastly, and we think this is important, there's no vote of non-confidence and there's no party whip in municipal politics. And so we believe the candidates should be responsible for the, part, the policies and the party not so. And this creates great autonomy, we think, for the political candidates. It takes some of the partisanship out of the process and allows those candidates to work in the best interest of their constituents. So uh, lastly, and I apologize, and then I'll give it back to Cheryl. Cheryl's more fun. <laughs> the dates. Um, we're, we're working towards an October 2025 election, which we believe then, because the election period starts in January of 2025, we'll lead our candidates in the field, which means we have to have a founding con convention by October, which means that we have to form our road associations next month, which then means we have to start today.
every party is you and me. It's the young couple living downtown trying to make ends meet. It's the growing family moving out to the suburbs to raise a family. It's the new immigrant who has moved here to work hard and carve out a better life for his family. It's the businessman looking to expand his venture. It's the professional woman moving up the corporate ladder. It's also the barista at your local coffee shop, the retail manager at your favorite store, the janitor at your kid's school, and you better believe it's the single mom working two jobs just to get by. Like you, I'm fed up with entitled politicians. the city hall run by the administration and not the other way around. Yeah. By soaring taxes with declining essential services. Water? Water? Everybody looks very nice and clean tonight, by the way. With rising crime and safety concerns. I am sick of a city hall who thinks they have the right to make me park, pay for parking in front of my own house. Yeah. I'm over City Hall thinking I work for them and not the other way around. Yeah. This is the city of the Calgary Stampede. This is the city of the 88 Olympics. This is a city with tremendous civic pride this is the city everyone wants to move to, to live, to work, to play, to raise their families, and run their businesses. We are a city of volunteers and entrepreneurs. We need to come together to leave this city the best place it can be for our children and our grandchildren. We are better than this. We deserve better than this. And the A Better Calgary Party is the pathway to getting us back to who we are and why we love this city. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl and John. Now is the time where we're going to be able to ask questions, not of me. I'm Norman the Dorman. Um, the, uh, but we have people around the room. Um, that you can, that can certainly ask questions of. We have uh, the media is going to be talking to Cheryl and John. They're going to be set up in the corner over here. We have Carrie, Sid, and Roy. And where are Carrie, Sid, and Roy? We have Roy over there. We have a hand up over there for Sid. We have Carrie missing in action. She'll be here. She's here. Sure. <laughs> My sister. Um, so please visit with the people who invited you to come here. Learn more about the Better Calgary Party. Ask questions, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, take in some of the things that you've learned um, here tonight. This is a room full of dope, <laughs> passionate Calgarians, but for sure. Um, at the back, you may have noticed, oh, there she is. Um, th there's a table you can Sign up if you want to. The membership start at ten dollars. Um, very reasonable. There is an opportunity to become a founding member for five years for just one hundred dollars. Um, highly encourage. Yeah, just one hundred dollars, and you get your say, and you get a really cool sticker. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out. Enjoy. We're going to have some refreshments available. Ask questions of the people that are here. Um, We'll try our best to answer them and let's move forward with common sense. Thank you very much.